live from Los Angeles, it's theCUBE, covering E3 2018. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at E3 at the LA Convention Center. 68,000 people roaming all over the place. It's really something to see if you've never been here before. The dogs are getting a little tired. We look over, we see some really comfy looking chairs. So we want to come over and check it out. So we are really excited to have Oliana Pateshkina and she is from AK Racing, the marketing manager. Great to Hi. see you. Hi, great to see you, thanks for stopping by. Absolutely, so tell us about these chairs that we're sitting in. Uh, these are, well we are, sitting in the gaming chairs. We have our office chairs as well, but the ones we are in are the gaming chairs. Um, I'm actually sitting in our limited edition the Fortnite, Fortnite chair. chair. Yeah, that was the one. So Fortnite had a huge event yesterday, right. Fortnite Pro-Am. That's the chair that was on stage. We only had 121 of them manufactured, and this is one of those. One of those ones. Yeah. So, so very interesting. So you guys started out a little, uh, before we turn on the cameras in the, in the automotive space, you know, right. for, for cars, or for chairs for cars, and then you said you have office chairs, mm -hmm. and then here we have gaming chairs. What is the difference between those types of chairs? What are some of the things you have to think about as you as you uh, design these things? Sure, so the racing car seats were originally, that's, that's, that's our heritage, that's how we started back in 2001, and those seats are used in the race cars. We still manufacture them, we don't carry them in the United States, but we do sell them uh, in other regions. Okay. And then we expanded into gaming chairs because that was a hot category, and that's where the, um, the, the the race car design comes in the bucket seat right. that you see on a lot of gaming chairs. But we not only you know know the aesthetics of it, but also their the ergonomic principles that need to be in a car in a, in a seat that you are going to be sitting in for a long time for hours and hours and hours. Right, right. And that's exactly what makes a gaming chair different from just a regular office chair that you can get, you know, from any place. Like, right. So what are some of the key things that you do that enable somebody to sit in this thing for so five, of, six hours? Right, all of the chairs come with headrest supports and backrest support. It is included with the chair, it's adjustable. The chair itself adjusts in um, any direction you can think of. The backrest of on, on all AK racing chairs actually reclines all the way flat, 180 degrees. Like everybody knows the meme uh, by PewDiePie, but can you do this? Right, right. Uh, so yeah, so our chairs go all the way flat. Right. Uh, you can adjust the armrests. Even our entry level gaming chairs have a 3D armrest, which means they are adjustable in three directions. They would go up and down, they'd rotate to the sides and slide back and forth. Right. The higher you get on the product line, you also get uh, shifting in and out. That, that we call 40 armrests. Right. Uh, you can, of course, adjust the height of the chair. Then we're using top quality uh, cold cured foam inside right. the chairs that is guaranteed not to go bad for at least five years. We have a five year warranty on the chairs. So that also. Five year warranty. A five year and warranty. And I can sit yes. in it for 10 hours at a time. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of chair time. Right, so all these things combined, the support, the premium materials, the adjustments on the chair right. allow you to make it good for yourself so you can sit in it for a very long time. Right. So I'm just curious in terms of the, you said it was the hot market, you guys got right. into this as a hot market. Yes. And, and you know, there's all, the games are obviously the stars of the show here, mm -hmm. but there's all kinds of ancillary products like you guys have, there's you know, really fancy keyboards, there's all this kind of, Thing. So when did you see the market for this type of stuff really start to go? I would say, so we entered the gaming market back in 2004. Okay. Uh, but I would say it really started booming once the eSports uh, arrived. And that would be about the 2010-ish, 2010, okay. 2010, 13. That's when it, you know, went crazy. Right, because then you're really showcasing the professionals right. sitting exactly. in their chair, playing at the highest levels, and yeah, that was exactly. probably the, exactly. uh, the catalyst. Right. So back in the days when no one was streaming, no one was playing professionally, that would be all in the home environment. Nobody saw it, like right. it was used, but nobody saw it. Now it's all over. All right, well, Liana, thanks for taking a few minutes and uh, letting us rest for a minute on your Thank comfy you. chairs. Thank you, all right. feel free to stop by any time if you need a rest. Oh, very you, good or if I need a game for 12 hours at a time. That is correct. <laughs> All right, she's Ileana, I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE from E3. We're at the LA Convention Center, 68,000 of our closest friends. Thanks for watching. Thank you.